Hi, I'm Maya Williams. On this playlist, I'm breaking down the video, Messiah 2030. The Appearing on the Seventh Day Prophecy. Exodus 24, 16 to 17 says, The glory of the Lord dwelt on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And on the seventh day he called to Moses out of the midst of the cloud. Now the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on the top of the mountain in the sight of the people of Israel. Once again, applying the day to 1,000 years Bible code, we see the same pattern as in many of the other 54 prophecies pointing to 2030. We also see similar language applied to the Lord's second coming and appearance before the people in Matthew 24, which says, Then will appear in heaven the sign of the Son of Man, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. All the tribes will mourn because they'll realize that they had been wrong about Jesus and that they're now at Satan's mercy, and Satan has no mercy. However, God does. So that end for them, which will be quite brutal according to Scripture, will not be the end of them. Day 8 is a time of judgment, of punishment and restoration, not of eternal hell so that the time will come for God to restore everything, as he promised long ago through his holy prophets, we're told in Acts 3.21. But since even born-again Christians stopped taking Jesus seriously way back 2,000 years ago, as lamented by Paul, for example, so that they stopped trying to understand, the born-again have believed Satan's lies and helped him deceive the nations as with the belief that our holy loving and forgiving god is going to burn most of the people he created and do it for the rest of eternity which is what satan would like to do so i also discern that exodus 24 isn't actually speaking of lord god almighty but of lord satan ruler of this world who set out to be like the Most High, to deceive the nations. He's been able to continue to deceive us even after Jesus went to the cross because of the body of Christ's unfaithfulness. As I've been saying and revealing on this playlist, I discern it's just as we've been told. God Almighty works all things according to the counsel of His will. In other words, He's taken all of Satan's lies and all of our sins and worked them all out for His glory and the good of all in the end. It's like when Joseph's brothers were evil to him by selling him as a slave, then lying to their father that he'd been killed, and God worked it out for everyone's good, including those wicked brothers, as we're told in Genesis 37 to 50. Glory to God! But the consequences for everyone were very real and pretty bad. Joseph suffered years of hardship and isolation. Their father suffered years of heartache for Joseph, then another form of heartache over his evil sons who'd lied to him all those years. And the brothers suffered years of guilt, even after the truth was revealed, so that they again lied to Joseph after their father died, fearing that he would now take revenge. And it's the same for humanity. Our sins, even though we've all been forgiven, will continue to bear fruit even after this life is over. In fact, as I understand it, until the end of the ages. So for at least the next thousand years, plus however long the age of judgment endures. And from everything the Lord has shown me, it looks like that age is way longer than just 1,000 years. So I've been working on a playlist of shorts, 59 second videos, summing up the reasons the body of Christ needs to repent. There will be a day when